Hi, welcome to Algebra 2. Today, we will start talking about Unit 1, Linear Functions and Systems. Okay, Unit 1. So by the end of this unit, you will be able to explain and identify the nature of functions in many forms using good notation. This is the goal for um, Lesson 1-1. And lesson two, you will be able to envision, graph, and describe a transformation such as f of x plus k. You will be able to understand how to read that. Um, and lesson three, you'll be able to write and graph piecewise functions based on real world data. Um, lesson five, find exact and approximate solutions with graphs, tables, and technology. Lesson six, solve linear systems graphically and algebraically. Lesson seven, use a shorthand method for solving linear systems. So our video today will cover lesson 1-1, key features of functions. Let's start with our vocabulary. What is a relation? Have you heard of relation before? Yeah, you know the word relationship, right? So relation is a similar thing in math. You will see a set of so if you think about relationship, you think about somebody else and you, right? There needs to be at least two people. So there needs to be a set of ordered pairs for math as well. In algebra, ordered pairs mean x and y. So parentheses x comma y will be a point. This is called a relation. They are uh, related. So example one, relation A would be described as 3 comma 1, 1 comma 4, and negative 2 comma 2. And I believe there should be 1 comma 0 here as well. So you want to graph all four ordered pairs of relation A. So I would graph, um, do you, which, which one do you graph first? The, the first number or the second number? So you would graph the x variable first on the x axis, right? So 3 represents the number of x variable. So 3 comma 1. You should already know how to graph. If not, I will be very concerned. Algebra 2 is um, is about going deeper into algebra, uh, what you already learned in Algebra 1. So this should be something that you've already learned and we're just doing a review. So 1 comma 4, 1 comma 4 right here negative 2 comma 2 right here 1 comma 0 right here okay example 2 here's a relation with blank points so for example What if I draw a curved line like this, which is going to go forever on your right, forever on your left, um, and it's not going to end? It is obvious that you will have how many number of points? A lot. Will, will you ever have a finite number of points? No. So you probably would have infinitely many points. Okay. All right, let's look at domain and range. What is domain and what is range? Domain is the set of all inputs. And it's usually associated with the variable x. Range is the set of all outputs, and it is associated with the variable y. Example 3. Find the domain and range of each relation above. So domain for example 1, relation A, 
is all the possible values of x. So where are, if you pick randomly, um, if you pick a number random from x values, what are the possible values? So basically all the, the first values in the, in the relation, right? In each relation. So 3, 1, negative 2, 1, right? So we're going to um, write that in order. So you have a repeating you number, right? 1 comma 4, 1 comma 0. In that case, you don't have to write it twice. You can just write it once. And we're going to start with the lowest number first, negative 2. And then 1 comma 3. And then put a bracket over there. So when you're talking about domain and range, we're not talking about points, right? Um, so we are going to write brackets. Range, what are all the possible values for y? 1, 4, 2, and 0. We're going to write that in order. So the least number would be 0. And then 1, then 2, then 4. Okay? So you're just listing all the numbers that you see in there. Um, what about example 2, where you have infinitely many solutions? Right. So then you have you you have a lot of x values. You have a lot of y possible y values. In this case, you can say all real numbers. All real numbers. Okay. So I'll give you another example just in case you see these. Okay. What if you have a graph? that has endpoints. So what if you have a graph like this, and then your coordinate plane is right here. So that is your y-axis, this is your x-axis, and then it starts at x is equal to 2, and then 3, 4, 5, 6, and it ends at x is equal to 6. Or your y starts at 3, and then it ends at 5. Okay? So in this case, your domain will be, you're going to put this bracket, the square bracket. You're going to say domain is going to start from 2, and then it's going to end at 6. So if you put 2, comma 6, the square bracket, it just means Oh, all the numbers between 2 and 6. Okay, so this is the domain. And then the range is going to be all numbers between 3 and 5. You can't just say there are 3 and 5 only because you're, you, you also have infinitely many points in between these two endpoints. So you still have infinitely many points, but your graph ends somewhere. So in that case, your domain and range should also end somewhere as well. Okay, so it's not all real numbers. You have a limit, then you use this bracket. Okay, good. Um, let's look at set builder notation. What is a set builder notation? So for example, I'm going to write a notation. So x, and then you have a big bar. x is equal to 2k, where k is an integer. So you're going you're gonna to look at this one by one. So the bar describes which variable you're talking about. Okay, so you're talking about all the variable, all the values that would be possible for x. So the set of all x, and then you're looking at the bar, right? Such that the bar basically just means such that. Okay, and, um, x is equal to two k. So whatever your k is. K could be 1, K could be 2, K could be a constant, okay, a number. Uh, whatever your K is, X is twice as big as K. But K is always an integer. 
where k is an integer. Okay? So this is how you read a set builder notation. You have a, a description for a variable. And you, ha you usually have an equation that makes that variable true. And then maybe there's a uh, way to describe your number uh, for a variable. Okay. Now we can do example three for the set builder notation. What is the domain? What is the range? Um, how do we know the domain and how do we know the range? Which one is the domain? Which one is the range? So in this case, your input would be k, right? And then you get an output of x. This means k is your domain, x is your range. So let's make a mapping diagram for, for relation A first, OK? We're going to do, we're going to still use relation A here. So we have 3, 1, 1, 4, negative 2, 2, 1, 0. Let's map our domain and range. We already said domain is negative 2 and then 1 and 3. And all our range would be 0, 1, 2, and 4. If you have a, a number of um, domain and range, then write all the possible numbers here, okay, in order, vertically. And then you're going to uh, draw an arrow. So your relation originally was 3, 1, 1, 4, negative 2, 2, and 1, 0. So negative 2, comma 2. So two, if you put negative 2 in, 2 will come out. So domain is the input, range is the output. Remember that. And 1, comma 4, you also have 1, comma 0 as well. Negative 2, negative, and 3, comma 1. So these are all from your points, okay? Whatever your x is, you draw an arrow to your y in your mapping diagram, okay? So looking at this, a relation, is this, a rela is this relation a function or not? You need to know what a function is. A relation is a function if, if, each domain element is paired with exactly one range element. What does that mean? So your each of your domain, right? Negative two, one, and three, are they paired with exactly one range element? So your one, look at your one. You have zero and four. Is that exactly one? No, you need to have one answer for each input, okay? So it is possible that you can have same answer. So for example, if this was um, pointing to the same range, same number in your range, that's okay, okay? As long as you have one answer for each of the x element, okay? All right, let's look at example four. Is a relation a function? Explain. So in this case, this is not a function because I'm going to type. So relation A is not a function because um, one maps to two values. One in domain maps to two values in range zero and four. Okay, so in this case, it is not a function. Okay. A 